What's up, you guys? My name's Noah. I make music as Haterade, and you are watching Sonic Academy. So in this video, we're going to be talking about parallel processing and a much more efficient and fast way to do this. Uh, and something that also is a lot less messy and cluttered. So let's take this chord progression, for example. I'll play this loop here. So let's say we wanted to maybe bring this down an octave and let's say we wanted to apply a bunch of reverb to this and a delay or some other crazy effects to it. Well, we could do that by using our return tracks down here, which can be useful, but at a certain point, let's if we just kept creating return tracks here, it gets almost unmanageable trying to find out which return track is which. And if you've got like different reverbs for all kinds of different things, then you're probably going to have a bad time. The al other alternative is just to create additional layers of the same thing like this, which can also get really messy and, and really bog down your workflow. So what you could do is you can create a group Take your, take your track here and create a group and then flip open the chains right here. Now what you could do at this point is option drag, click and drag in a new copy there. And let's say, uh, let's bring the MIDI down at 12 on this one. And we're going to filter out all of the, uh, Or you know what, let's go the opposite. Let's go up. Let's go up one octave, and we're going to filter out all of the low and mid frequencies and just keep these. And then we're going to apply a delay to this thing. And since it's a parallel effect, we can turn it up all the way. So let's bring down that feedback there. Let's bring some reverb up here. And uh, since we've got this at full blast, we want to bring down the volume here because we want it to be an accent. Let's make it a ping pong delay. And so now doing this, we can maintain that same uh, integrity of the main sound without losing any of its power and we can keep it all contained in one rack. The best part about this too is that you can just swap in other devices too. So if you've got like a chain that you really like, like I really like how this sounds, you can save it as an instrument rack and label it as, I don't know, lo-fi chords with echo and pitch shifting. I don't know. You guys can get creative with that, that sort of thing. But this is like also works the same on audio too. Let's drop on an effect here. Let's go with the glue compressor. Uh, yeah, glue compressor and let's uh, th throw some vinyl distortion on there too. So let's go heavy on the compression. So we're kind of lost all the power from those drums a little bit. So why don't we try doing it in parallel? We're gonna group it. And uh, apologies for the crackle, guys. Let's uh, bring that down. And what we're gonna do here is, well, I just like to put a utility down here. So, because if we duplicated the chain, we would have to go back in and delete these. And the utility doesn't really do anything. So we can bring this down. So you can save this rack as a parallel drum compression rack. And this works with pretty much any effect you could possibly think of. And the best part about this too is that it's so streamlined for creativity and being able to save it and just recall it at any time is just, it's such a great trick. So, and it'll help you with your workflow too. It'll help you recall these back in the future. If you wanna pull that same instrument back in, you totally can and use it on a different song. So that is parallel processing via chains in a nutshell.
Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate the support from you guys. If you liked this video, then you know, smash that like button. And if you want to be notified about new content, hit the subscribe and the bell notifications. Peace.